Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over every single character's best weapons hidden seals. So basically what these are at level 25 and 30 when you end up upgrading a weapon beyond the uh, 20 level cap later into the game. There are two seals that every single weapon has that are completely hidden to you that you don't know until you end up upgrading it all the way. Uh, every single tier of weapons have it, however I will specifically go be going over every single best weapon on on every single character and what specific seals those have so you can kind of build your builds accordingly as if you don't know this information prior you might end up building a build onto a weapon that doesn't really work with the seals that the weapon has uh, with that being said this uh, video obviously contains spoilers as to what every single character in the game is I will be going over them chronologically starting with Link, Impa, Zelda, the four champions so on and so forth so um, you can kind of watch and uh, go up to the point where um, you aren't in the storyline and just do it that way if you want. Uh, otherwise, if you don't mind spoilers at all, well, you can just go over all of them then. But anyways, as far as uh, Link's main weapon, we got ourselves the Master Sword. Uh, the Master Sword ends up gaining 8% additional damage when at full hearts, as well as once it gets to 30, it gets the heal or percent of damage dealt. Uh, you do have to do quite a bit of damage for this to end up healing, however, it is the best overall healing ability that any weapon has as a modifier, and this is pretty good for keeping Master Sword at max health, so it not only gains damage from its modifier, but it also gets to get its special effect that the Master Sword has with its little wind blade that it ends up doing when uh, fully at max, like in many other uh, Legend of Zelda games. Uh, overall, it's a pretty solid build. Uh, you can end up building up with uh, attack speed in order to go and uh, basically do an infinite uh, stun loop uh, with five Ys into an X and then stasis ends up working out pretty good to stun most enemies. Uh, it's not a permanent stun on everything in the game, but quite a few enemies it will end up permanent stunning on. Uh, one pretty noteworthy mention, uh, Link of course has a billion and a half weapons, but I do feel like mentioning one that isn't his best Master Sword and that is the Royal Broadsword, which is arguably potentially better. Uh, the main thing with this is it actually has an attack speed plus plus onto its uh, fifth perk when it gets to level 25. This is uh, pretty much the strongest effect in the game, additional attack speed. So being able to stack this even higher, uh, substantially higher with an extra 9% is very, very, very good. And it just makes his infinite stun combo even stronger. It also has a higher base damage than the Master Sword, though it doesn't gain some of the benefits of Master Sword, like the additional damage and AoE that it has when fully maxed, as well as not being able to do additional damage to some enemies. Though overall, it is still a very, very strong uh, option to consider. I have yet to find it with a base 61 or higher, or, you know, 61 being the highest. But I'm pretty sure higher might end up existing. We know uh, currently the highest uh, is a Savage Lino Sword at 76. This, of course, is 66. But um, that, I believe, is the highest that has been uh, noted in the game so far. But uh, he can end up going over 70 on some. So hoping we could eventually find a Royal Broadsword that's also at 70. But uh, definitely worth considering as an alternative weapon. As far as his hammer and spears, they are pretty much irrelevant just because of how ridiculously strong his swords are. Anyways, now to Impa. Speaking of strong characters, so uh, Impa, unfortunately, uh, even though she's a very, very strong character, so her modifiers that she ends up getting are somewhat average. Uh, she does have a diamond and a square, though, so this is pretty good. A uh, diamond square, I personally feel like, are the best two in the game. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Link has a double, um, uh, or sorry, did I say diamond? I mean hexagon. You know what that shape is. But, um, or, um, yeah, hexagon, pentagon, hexagon. <laughs> hexagon has six sides. It's a hexagon. But anyways, uh, the hexagon and uh, squares tend to be the best two uh, modifiers in the game, mostly because of the type of um, additional modifiers they can do with it. For example, damage per 100 KOs is pretty good to put into diamonds, whereas squares have so many options. It has attack speed. It has damage when under 30% hearts. It has um, dodge. It has quite a few things, though dodge isn't as useful. It has special charge and it just has so, so many options. But uh, anyways... As far as uh, her builds, you can end up building it basically in two ways. You could build a bunch of four squares into her uh, special attack rate charge and just kind of do that. And, or you can end up going the 4-2 method. This will end up giving you the most amount of attack. The highest attack that you can ever gain as a additional plus value is 20. This is if you have four of one specific shape and then two of a different specific shape, you will end up getting a 20 bonus. One thing to note is some characters do have two of the exact same shape on their final, meaning theoretically you can go six of the same shape. However, six 
of the same shape only does plus 20. You, I, you, I mean, a plus of 15. It only gives the four uh, bonus. It does not end up giving a six bonus for whatever reason. Kind of weird uh, that you would actually have less damage that way, but um, that is the case. So it is actually not viable to go six of a shape. Four of a shape and two of the shape are generally the most viable build. Otherwise, you go into five squares, which is also a very viable build just because of how powerful many of the square abilities uh, are. As far as our overall weapon, um, it's kind of average. Special attack rate is definitely really good on Impa. She already gains it at an absurdly quick rate, and having it even quicker is pretty nice. Heal by defeating enemies is rather underwhelming, though, but uh, it's kind of good that it's underwhelming in a sense, because you don't want to overheal, uh, like Link's ability, where it heals you a lot, because Link wants to stay at full health. Generally, when you're playing Impa, that is the exact opposite, due to how good damage at 30% or less hearts is. You can stay at a deliberately low health, and one really good thing about defeating uh, enemies for this is uh, you need about 50 or so kills. I haven't actually calculated out exactly how many you end up needing. I haven't tested that, but uh, it seems like heal by uh, defeating enemies seems to be about 50 kills for one fourth of a heart. Uh, with that being said, if you're at a really low HP value from constantly being knocked down to one fourth of a heart, you can end up getting above a full heart by doing this, so you can end up protecting yourself against a whole instance of damage while still very consistently staying at damage below 30% hearts. You also don't have to worry about the heal ever healing you over beyond that point, even if you eat an apple, because it's just so much little healing that it's never going to move you past it. So overall, even though that ability is pretty bad and basically just a visual effect in a sense, it is actually relatively good for a lot of builds that uh, Impa uh, tends to get uh, put into. Anyways, next up, as far as uh, Zelda's, um, the most relevant thing, she actually kind of has two equally relevant weapons. She has a uh, bow of light, which of course is basically like Link's uh, Master Sword, as well as the uh, Sealing Bow. Uh, basically, for Sealing Bow, it actually has a higher base damage. It might look weird because it's actually one damage lower, but it's because it's at plus 5 currently, not plus 10. But it does have a 4 higher base damage. It has a base value of uh, 71 as far as uh, what it ends up getting. And uh, with this, um, you can end up getting her special attack rate up a little bit quicker. This is uh, pretty relevant because her ability just requires a lot of a special attack. And being able to build it up quicker is uh, pretty nice. Uh, alternatively, she does have a pretty decent double combo for her Bow of Light. It ends up gaining a bunch of uh, attack speed. I mean, not a bunch of attack speed, but it has a square, so you can build attack speed into it. But it has a bunch of resistance to status effects, as well as heal, the same heal that Link has. So not only can you end up getting that same heal, but you also have a resistance to a bunch of effects that can kind of be uh, pretty annoying within the game particularly on the Lizalfos whenever they end up doing it in gigantic areas, uh, particularly towards some of the later stages, but even at any stage in the game can sometimes be a little bit annoying with uh, some of the status effects. I believe this also works, if I'm not mistaken, on the jelly. So whenever those jellies end up exploding and doing like a bunch of electricity or fire or anything like that, I'm pretty sure this has immunity to that too. So you can kind of just blow straight through jellies and not need to worry about their explosion uh, because those can be kind of annoying, especially in some areas of the, uh, of the game. But anyways, uh, those are her two options. Basically one for special attack and one for not dying are basically what these two uh, end up coming out to. Next, we have ourselves, of course, uh, Mifa. As far as uh, Mifa is concerned, uh, she has a uh, pretty decent uh, special attack charge rate. Uh, it's actually pretty good on her as she does have a uh, very good special for healing. She's really good at not dying in the sense that you can end up doing a uh, one-fourth uh, heart thing again and it just heal right back up and it doesn't heal you too far uh, to the point where if you wanted to run a 30% or lower damage, you actually could. However, she's in mid-air so much that you can actually just build a mid-air um, uh, attack build. Uh, you end up doing the same kind of thing with Ravali, but you can also end up doing the same thing with uh, Mipha. So it ends up working out um, pretty well. Um, she does have a chance of landing Shockwave. Out of every single character that has this ability, it's probably one of the uh, strongest that ends up having this, mostly because she constantly goes from in the air to on the ground to in the air to on the ground, whereas someone like Ravali wants to stay in the air pretty much the entire time, so you don't really tend to come onto the ground compared to uh, other options. So um, she actually gets to use that pretty uh, decently. But uh, overall, yeah, you can just build mid-air attack, special attack, and then chance of uh, landing Shockwave on the final thing. Uh, overall, pretty underwhelming ability, but um, it's at least better than what uh, Impa ended up getting, if uh, nothing else. As far as Daruk, uh, he has probably one of the worst ones. Not only does he have that really bad heal by defeating enemies things, but he also has da dash attack damage. While he does have a very good dash, he does not have the best dash in the game as far as overall usability. And he just seems really bad in pretty much every single way. He's probably among one of my least favorite characters. And his weapon kind of reflects that as there isn't really any good viable way to build into this. Honestly, I would kind of just ignore Daruk. Um, he just seems underwhelming in almost every way. And you would never just spam his dash so much that you would use it on your own ability. You would be using his other abilities too. Uh, whereas quite a few other things that have a modifier there. Uh, like someone else who has a dash there as well as... Um, 
uh, something like Revali, who ends up gaining like additional attack damage while in the air, they actually get to use this a lot better than Darup does. And overall, it just seems like a really horrifically bad weapon and character. Aside from that, uh, speaking of Revali, uh, we have Revali. So, uh, mid-air attack damage. I generally hate when a character gains additional damage to only one attack style. However, it works insanely good on Revali, particularly mid-air attack. It doesn't work better on any character other than Revali. Uh, you can use it on Mipha, as I mentioned, though. But uh, as far as, like, absolute, absolute best, there is Revali and one other one, once we get a little bit later into the video. But um, as far as mid-air attack damage, this, of course, allows you to do additional damage while you're, of course, in the air. And Revali is pretty much always in the air, so you're basically constantly getting that damage immediately. It's really good for when you're instantly starting out a battle. Revali, in general, is really good at taking outposts. He could pretty much just spam his Y a couple times, throw down a special, and it's already cleared. Insanely, insanely good at killing uh, very large areas in the game, and has the best crowd control in the game, so highly advise using this character. Very strong option, covers a lot of ground. Uh, his chance of shockwave, pretty bad though. I am not a huge fan of this uh, shockwave on him. Very rarely do you ever want to touch the ground. And when you're doing your combos, I don't think it even has a shockwave chance, most of his combos, uh, because the way that he lands onto the ground isn't really like a aggressive land. Um, so I'm not even sure if it can trigger on some of his combos, which makes it pretty underwhelming. But at least he gets the mid-air attack, and just him having higher damage in general is pretty good, combined with uh, just stacking attack speed. Uh, ideally, you'd actually want to attack, uh, probably stack three attack speeds on him. I have special attack right there just because we don't have more uh, attack speed yet but uh we're working on it we'll find them eventually uh one thing to keep in mind is that uh i did it on very hard mode it took about 100 hours to complete out the game and about another 50 hours to end up maxing out all of the uh weapons but to max them max them as far as having perfect seals i feel like it's almost going to take a, another 50 hours on top of that just because of how rare some things tend to be like attack speed anyways as far as the next uh character we got herself uh urbosa as far as Urbosa is concerned, um, she does have a kind of weird build. She has strong attack damage, which is good on her. She obviously uses her strong attack whenever she does any of her lightning moves. So in that regard, that can be pretty decent. However, overall, not really anything too spectacular. Uh, you get extra damage when you lock on. Of course, this is whenever you you end up using the R stick and you click it in. You end up locking on to whatever your closest target is. And uh, whatever that is, it'll end up doing additional damage to it. The biggest issue with the lock on target uh, modifier in general is uh, it only applies the damage to whatever you're specifically targeting. So if you're currently fighting two things at once or three things at once, uh, you're only applying that damage to specifically the target, uh, which is makes it kind of annoying. And strong attack in general compared to other attack modifiers that exist within the game, like damage per 100 KOs and while under 30% damage or uh, under 30% hearts, it seems so much stronger than any of uh, these really low single attacks. Like with something like mid air, it gives such a ridiculously high uh, base value that it's worth using. But something like strong attack, regular attack, stuff like that, the base value of the damage modifier is so weak that it doesn't seem worth it. Like if that was like a 20% or something, like yeah, we could make that work. If it was like something like the mid air one, uh, like that would end up working out pretty decently. But I only 7% it's pretty underwhelming and overall uh, rather unfortunate because the is actually kind of fun to play and the fact that she can't end up utilizing that not the greatest also you may notice this uh, this weapon obviously isn't built yet uh, a lot of these weapons are not fully built while a couple of the initial characters do because of course I've been using them a bit more not every single one of these characters have been built to optimal builds I will be covering a separate video kind of going over builds obviously we're mentioning some in this video however obviously <laughs> I haven't been able to finish them yet as that takes even more time but I will get around to it uh, eventually uh, anyways as far as Hestu, uh, he ends up getting some pretty decent modifiers. He has the same kind of double diamond thing that, or, um, yeah, diamond. I'll just keep calling it diamond. I keep calling it diamond. You know what it is. Hexagon. But, um... The double diamond, uh, he actually has the same kind of premise as Link, in a sense. Uh, he ends up gaining damage per 100 KOs. Absolutely great modifier. So you could just stack uh, four to attack speed with it and then heal by uh, defeating enemies, which, of course, is very bad. However, the damage per 100 KOs and the fact that they're both diamonds going together uh, end up working out pretty good. And then you just stack a bunch of attack speed and boom, you're good to go. Uh, Hestu seems like a pretty weird character to use. I don't think I fully understand how you're supposed to use him. However, that weapon build actually isn't horrible. Like, you gave the, give this weapon build to, like, almost any other character... And it would be ridiculously solid, so uh, maybe we'll just need to mess with the character a bit more and see if something will work. Because the weapon build itself is actually among one of the better ones. It's just him himself is rather useless as a character. Anyways, next we got ourselves some Sidon. Uh, Sidon has uh, regular attack damage, which I really do not understand at all. 
Uh, and he also has a lock on, similar to what Arbosa has. But I really, really do not understand why he has this. Um, the main weird thing about this is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% sure, but whenever you're doing your strong attack and then you're doing, like, the ZR button in order to, like, combo the shark thing or whatever his little trident warder thing is, uh, this ends up, um, I believe, counting as a strong attack. I am almost guaranteed that does not count as regular attack damage. And if that is the case, where it is strong attack and not regular attack, I have no clue why he has regular attack, because that's, like, the whole premise of him, is, like, throw down five uh, Ys, give an X into it, do a bunch of ZRs when the timing comes up, and then, boom, you do a bunch of damage. But if that counts as strong and not regular, that just makes no sense. And Lock-On has the same problem that I mentioned with Lock-On earlier. So, overall, pretty underwhelming, uh, which is kind of unfortunate, because he does actually seem like a half-decent character, but his weapon just does not seem that good. Anyways, as far as uh, next one... Uh, we have ourselves the uh, strong attack damage with the 20% reflect. This is the first time we're actually seeing the 20% uh, uh, reflect here. As far as 20% reflect, I don't feel like this comes into play uh, too often. Uh, very, very rarely are you kind of turtling against enemies. I guess maybe against guardians and stuff like that. But uh, most, uh, and I guess maybe uh, Lionels as well. But uh, very rarely are you kind of turtling and guarding a bunch against enemies. Normally you're just going all in, trying to get the combos, trying to get locks down on it, trying to uh, expose its gauge and get it into stasis and stuff like that. Very rarely are you really guarding a lot, so I don't feel like that ends up coming into play too, too often. But uh, it can be useful. 20% damage as Reflect is not horrible. Uh, the fact that he has strong attack damage actually is okay on him. Similar to Urbosa, it does end up having a uh, decent effect in the sense that uh, most of his combos are based on him eating a random food and then getting into a strong attack combo. The main thing I end up hating about him is mostly the fact that he does not have... Um, his um, eating mechanic is completely RNG. So you get one of three different abilities, and basically that determines what combo you'll do next. But generally, when you're fighting a battle, you kind of already know what combo you want to use on an enemy, and if you keep eating food that doesn't give you the right combo, that's really annoying to end up using. And overall, it just seems way too luck-based of a character in most situations to be consistent. Uh, aside from that, uh, we have ourselves the uh, mid-air attack, similar to what uh, Ravali has. Uh, mid-air attack is uh, pretty decent in um, the fact that you're pretty much always going to be in the air, similar to Ravali. Almost every single one of your combos ends up being airborne. Uh, damage to foes uh, with status effects is pretty bad, though. This is actually, even though it's one of his modifiers in the special category, it is one of them similar to improved items found that can actually be found uh, anywhere. So you could just get it uh, whenever. So it seems kind of weird that he has it as one of his uh, final abilities, as very, very rarely does it actually get to uh, do much. Uh, but you can end up doing it with a bunch of mid-air. It just counts as all of his damage. Uh, do keep in mind, damage does cap in this game. I'm not 100% sure exactly how damage capping works, but uh, don't just spam too much damage because it does eventually re end up reaching a cap. And uh, just doing 4 into 2 will normally make it so you don't. Uh, right here, I just kind of have an improved item on him. Obviously, he'd probably benefit quite a bit from having a higher attack speed so he can get his combos, so he can get into mid-air and then do a bunch of damage as you kind of need your combos to get started in order to kind of get the mid-air effect and then just do all of your mid-air uh, strong attacks and all that gets the mid-air attack bonus onto it. Ends up working out pretty good. I highly doubt you're ever going to use the damage to foes with stats effects as pretty much the only realistic way of doing that with most characters is to go and um, use a staff on them. There are a uh, few other instances where you can do it, like Cryon this thing over water and then it freezes them however these are very very situations and on most map there really isn't water to use for that mechanic uh, let alone in a boss area where you might be fighting something so uh overall not really that good of an effect but you can still kind of use the revali mid-air effect and uh, end up working out pretty good anyways as far as reju i can actually finally mention my favorite team in the game now so whenever you're doing a four player map uh there is a four team that i absolutely love and it is a uh, link um it is uh, Link, Impa, Riju, and uh, Ravali. So basically, what this combo ends up doing is uh, Link uses your kind of all around character. He has Perma Stun. Uh, he's just basically good at everything, as well as Exposing Gauge. He has the most options for Exposing Gauge, ends up working out really, really well. You have Impa for the highest DPS in the game and also has Perma Stun in a full AoE, which is a little bit more consistent than Link, so it needs a little bit of startup, unlike Link's, where as soon as you get started, pretty much just infinite, as long as you have attack speed. Uh, Riju you use from going from location to location. So basically her premise is you build a bunch of special attack on her. You get her dash damage. This was the character I was mentioning earlier that has the better dash attack compared uh, to Daruk. And basically what you end up doing with this is you go and uh, move wherever you want. You keep spamming X and you will always be in a full speed uh, dash. 
Uh, one thing that's pretty unique about her, whereas many other characters will have a dash where they start slow and then kind of go quick, uh, she has a consistently full speed dash, which means you're moving at the exact same speed constantly, making you a lot harder to hit because it doesn't have any kind of startup lag. Uh, this works really, really good from moving from point A to point B because not only will you pretty much kill every single small unit along your way, but you'll also build up pretty much three meters of special. So you then do that, go to a camp, and then end up killing it. While doing that, you basically go and have Ravali go and automatically uh, assign to a certain camp, as well as every other character. And you basically just go, tell them where to go, have Ravali kill out a camp, have Link and uh, Impa take out every strong unit, and boom, you're pretty much good to go. And uh, personally, I consider it one of the four, uh, strongest four combos in the game as far as what you could build so definitely highly highly advise uh using her there are very few maps where her she's actually viable though for that mechanic however for the maps that it is it is very very strong to consider as whenever you're just moving through units and normally wouldn't really be doing much with them because you're just trying to take main objectives you could build up your entire special bar and probably kill them along the way without wasting a single second so pretty nice option Anyways, next, we're starting to get into some pretty spoilery territory. Everything up until this point are kind of things that most people probably know. So if you're trying to avoid character spoilers, we are starting to get into a couple of them. So uh, next, we have Master Koga. So, of course, yeah, he ends up joining you later in the storyline. But anyways, as far as him, uh, he has the strong attack and chance of landing Shockwave. Um... I don't feel like he lands that often to really get the Shockwave benefit, though. Uh, he kind of seems a little bit similar to a Revali in that sense, uh, except that he's pretty much always on the ground rather than always in the sky. But uh, very rarely does it really seem like he comes down onto the ground. A few of his moves do, but uh, it didn't seem like enough to justify giving him chance of landing Shockwave. Seems like a really weird effect to give to him. He does have strong attack, too. If I'm not mistaken, his big uh, laser thingy does count as strong attack, if I'm not mistaken. So at least that's kind of cool. Uh, that can synergize with that. But overall, seems kind of average, underwhelming. Nothing really too special overall. Uh, as well as the characters, it seems really, really weird to use. He's kind of the comic relief uh, uh, character, so it kind of makes sense. But anyways, as far as next, we got the king! So as far as the king, uh, he has the uh, reflect from earlier, 20% reflect. And he's the only character other than Link who gets the chance to uh, KO weak enemies. Uh, Link has it on some of his other weapons. But uh, as far as the king, he has it on his main primary weapon, which is rather interesting. Uh, he has chance to KO weak enemies. This overall isn't too good. Generally weak enemies. Uh, weak enemies are considered all those really small ones, like the super small dots. I don't believe it works on the next size up. I'm not 100% certain on that. But uh, I know for sure, obviously, it works on those very, very small dots. However, these enemies already die so quick that having a percent chance to kill them doesn't really help too much, like, at all, since uh, a few hits and they're pretty much already dead. On later stages where they have, like, such beefy HP, especially on very hard, it might be kind of okay, but, uh, I don't know, it just kind of seems rather underwhelming overall, both his two effects. If nothing else, they are squares, so you can go four squares into two hexagons, which is, of course, always a good build. So you can end up doing that, which is nice, but aside from that, it seems kind of rather average. The character itself seems good, though, so uh, if nothing else, you can end up utilizing that. And at least it could still go to four squares into two diamonds, or if you really want to four diamonds. Though I do believe four uh, square to diamonds is the uh, better option uh, for him. Uh, next up, we got the Great Fairy. Uh, Great Fairy, another one of those kind of Arbolsa kind of setups. It has the strong attack damage into the damage on Locked On. Already kind of given my opinion on this. Not really a huge fan of it. Uh, I do feel like it's kind of best on Arbolsa, though, out of all the characters that do end up having it just because of her playstyle. But, um, yeah, the fairy has it too. Overall, fairy, just way too big of a hitbox character to really bother ever using. I pretty much just got this weapon just to show it for the video because, gosh, is she annoying to use. Her hitbox is absolutely massive. She can even block entire hallways on some maps because her hitbox is so large. So if you're not actively using her, she just blocks everything. And then when you switch to her, she's still blocking everything. It's just an awful character design. And, yeah, don't use her. <laughs> do not use her. Anyways... As far as our next, uh, we have ourselves the Monk. Uh, Monk actually is the only character that, uh, as its main weapon, gets attack speed. Attack speed, of course, the best modifier overall in the game because it allows you to get your combos down uh, quicker. Unfortunately, he went from having this very good effect to having a really bad effect of damaging foes with stas effects. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't work out that well, unfortunately. Uh, stas effects really hard to really end up applying in this game. Uh, not really too many ways to end up doing it without wasting resources like staffs and stuff like that. And it's very situational when you can do it otherwise. And overall, just not that good. He does luckily have a four square build. So he could do it into that. And um, at least with nothing else, he 
gets that really high attack speed. So theoretically, you could even just build five attack speed plus plus if you truly want to. I'm pretty sure for my next modifier on him, I'm probably just going to put another attack speed plus plus and kind of just call it uh, there. It's not really much of a point in putting the other modifier down as it's only going to give you five damage and you're already going to have enough damage off of everything else. Uh, it should be fine just to go with that extra bit of attack speed. Just get down to 20% or less hearts and pretty much be uh, good to go. Squares luckily have both attack speed and damage on it. So you can kind of combine both and already have everything you need without needing any other shape. So it ends up working out uh, pretty well. Next, we got ourselves Terrico. So Terrico, probably the most spammy character in the entire game. So to make him even spammier, you can go for attack speed plus plus if you really wanted to. But um, yeah, just doing it with KOs for your own sanity is probably the better way to go. Because him with six attack speed plus plus is probably absurd how much clicking you would have to do. Like, you definitely need two hands on the right side of the controller to even play him properly. He would need so many inputs. But, uh, yeah, he's already an extremely input-heavy character. The fact that he needs to lock on in order to do anything is rather unfortunate because um, it's you're already clicking so much. <laughs> Locking on to do that is already going to be annoying. He also has the damage reflect thing, so uh, you might even need even more clicks and end up to uh, end up using that. Of course, the main premise of Terrico is you're constantly spamming the ZR. Uh, you can do charge attacks with it too, but uh, you're doing a combination of charges and uh, spamming with it. So you kind of have to use uh, both aspects of it in order to play him um, for full maximum damage, which is a really, really annoying character to use. I feel like he has a lot of potential, but just how hard he is to use, he's probably the hardest character actually in the game to pick up um, just because of the amount of inputs that you need per second to do it. And of course, with the some slight frame rate problems that this game has at times, um, it can be a little bit annoying to kind of play him just in general. So overall, pretty good character. Uh, not too bad of a kit overall. Uh, for both its uh, weapon and everything, uh, as far as shapes anyways that you could do with it. But um, yeah, it's just going to be really annoying to end up utilizing. And anyways, finally, last character, the last hidden seals, we have ourselves Calamity Ganon, which is also Terrico 2.0, though theoretically 1.0 since he was the previous Terrico of this world. But anyways, as far as uh, Ganon is concerned, uh, I kind of just build them all into diamond. Um, unfortunately has two very heavy attack based modifiers which is really bad uh diamond into the attack one he has a strong attack thing he does have the same heal though that zelda and link has so that's kind of cool um so he does have that as an option however overall pretty average not really going to be used much uh character itself also has a bit of a hitbox problem not as bad as the fairy does but it definitely has a hitbox problem nonetheless so um do be careful if you ever do bother using him as uh he does have a oversized hitbox compared to uh the average uh, character but anyways those are all the hidden modifiers on the main weapon of every single character if you have any other questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below i will be covering um a more content on this game going forward we already have almost 150 200 hours or so into this game actually, actually i think it's a bit closer to 200 hours if you count the demo and everything but uh yeah we'll be playing it a lot into the future We're gonna be covering more guides uh on it very soon as far as how to farm various things like rupees and uh, uh monster parts because that could be annoying for farming weapons as well as farming weapons in general and a bunch of similar things to that like that we'll also have proper weapon guides obviously this kind of went over weapons a little bit uh however it didn't go like super in depth nor did i build multiple weapons for most characters and showed them but we'll be doing that going into the future and just kind of covering a bunch of stuff might even eventually make a tier list of these characters though quite a few of them i do need to play quite a few more like a couple of them i don't know like at all like how they properly work like hestu and um master koga in particular are just so weird what their play style is compared to like every other character there's a couple of other pretty weird ones too but uh those two in particular are just kind of far out there as far as uh, what they end up uh, doing but anyways guys i'll wrap it up for this video i will catch you guys later thank you all so much for watching feel free to leave any other comments below feel free to leave a like on the video it helps out a lot feel free to subscribe for future content and i'll catch you guys later goodbye everyone